In today's video, I'm gonna answer a question that I get a lot, and that question is, do you need to be on social media in order to make more money as a reseller? The answer, yeah. That's it, video's done. I gave them the answer already, so we, we done, we done filming. In this video, we're gonna be talking about the different ways that you can make money with social media, or should I say how you can help social media help you make money, as well as some different tips and tricks when it comes to utilizing social media as part of your reselling business model. Stay tuned. Won't nobody love you the way they should. Won't nobody check up on you, make sure you're good. Won't nobody check those body tendons by your neck. All Hi everyone, my name is Becky Park and I am a part-time reseller on Poshmark, eBay, Mercari, and Kitizen. And I also create content to put on social media platforms like Instagram. And over on Instagram, I am at Becky Park on Poshmark, as well as obviously here on YouTube. And so I feel like after having been active on Instagram for for like, I think two and a half years now, maybe it's like almost three years. And then here on YouTube, creating YouTube videos for a little over a year, I feel like I have kind of learned the ins and outs, one, to creating content for social media, but also I can tell you from firsthand experience what the benefits of social media are when it comes to your reselling platform. So before we talk about how can you use your social media platform to make more money, we're gonna talk about why social media is so important in establishing who you are as a brand. It used to be back in the day that there just weren't as many brands to choose from, whether it was clothes, whether it was restaurants, whether it was, you know, big box stores. It was just, you would go to the few options that you had in your town. But now, especially with the internet, you have so many options. So people are learning a lot more about the different brands that are out there and they're choosing to spend their money with brands that align with their values and brands that they believe in. So let's use Everlane as a case study, for example. Everlane is a brand that makes pretty simple clothing. Like they're not making super trendy pieces, but they're just sticking with like capsule wardrobe type pieces, nothing super fancy, and you know, just kind of staple pieces for your closet. But why why is it that someone is willing to spend $48 at Everlane for a simple short sleeve cotton t-shirt when they could get basically the same exact t-shirt at a place like Target or Forever 21? It's because people believe in Everlane's mission to create sustainable fashion, fashion that is made of sustainable materials that they are paying people fair prices to create and that are being made in safe environments for their employees. It goes even deeper than that, but ultimately that's why people are willing to drop some serious money Everlane. It's not because they're getting the trendiest thing. It's not because Everlane has this signature look that no one else has. It's... <laughs> I mean, there's nothing super special about Everlane except for how their clothes are made and the values of the brand itself. And that's why social media is so important to you as a reseller, because it's your opportunity to establish yourself as a brand, to educate your following and your future potential buyers as to who you are as a brand, what you stand for, what you believe in. And those are the reasons why certain people will decide to shop with you and not with someone else. Even when I think about myself as a Poshmark, buyer and I buy a lot of stuff on Poshmark when I think about myself as a Poshmark buyer I'll tell you what like first and foremost if I have the opportunity I'm always gonna buy from someone that I know first and because of my social media platforms I have grown to create relationships with a lot of other resellers and if I can support someone who I know I can put a name to the face then that's always who I'm gonna shop with and furthermore I want to shop with someone who I admire who I respect and how do I grow these feelings of admiration and respect for someone. It's because I've gotten to know them through their Instagram. I've gotten to know them through their stories. I've gotten to know them through their feed. Maybe we've even interacted via DM. And when I reached out to them, they responded politely as if they cared about me as a human being. All these things matter. How you treat other people through social media platforms matter. How you present yourself and the things that you care about, they matter. And it's those things that make people want to buy from you. Social media is great for creating community. It's also a great place for you to share any knowledge that you have when it comes to reselling. And again, when people are able to consume your content because you're providing content that is valuable to them, then they have even more reason to now support you when you're running a big sale in your Poshmark closet or when you put some items in your stories on Instagram and say, this is what just came in. If anyone's interested, like just shoot me a DM. Or when you share an affiliate link on your YouTube video, it 
gives people more of a reason to want to buy from you because you have already given them so much value and this is their way of saying thank you. I remember when I first started reselling and I was consuming content on Instagram and YouTube, there were specific resellers that I would consistently shop from almost as like a thank you for all that they taught me. So there's a lot of value to providing good educational helpful content for people both on Instagram or if you have a Facebook group or if you have a YouTube channel. Once you provide value to someone, people want to find a way to thank you for that. And again, if you're strategic about how you're using your different social media platforms, you're providing an opportunity for people to get to know you as a person better. So you're not just this faceless person on Poshmark who's selling all this random stuff, but now they're able to associate everything that you share on Instagram or on YouTube or on Facebook or wherever with your potential buyers and you're able to let them know who you are. So for example, on my Instagram, I know I do this a little too much even, but I definitely like to share a lot about the fact that I am a full-time high school choir teacher and I will share videos of my students singing. I'll show rehearsals. I'll show them even just being silly. And I can't tell you how many people have reached out to me and said, I love the fact that you're a teacher and you resell on the side because I do the same thing. I've even had music teachers specifically or musical theater majors reach out to me and say, Say, it's so cool that you and I are doing similar things in life and we're also doing similar things in life when it comes to reselling. So you're creating these connections with people using platforms like Instagram. So it's really cool if you can open up as a person and let people know who it is that they could potentially be buying from. And the reason why that it's important is because now when we start talking about how can you make more money as a reseller using social media platforms, you have to make sure that you've taken care of all that stuff I just talked about first creating community, creating educational content that people are gonna find value from, providing an opportunity for people to get to know you more as a person by giving them a behind the scenes look at your reselling journey. All of those different things are things that you have to do first, I think, before you can start making money on Instagram or YouTube or wherever. So what are the different ways that you can make money on different social media platforms? I'd say the easiest way and probably the most obvious way is to share with your audience what kinds of things you have for sale. So a lot of people will do this with thrift hauls on YouTube, for example. Whenever I make a thrift haul video, I will show the items that I picked up and I will always have a disclaimer at the beginning of the video saying, hey, if you are interested in anything that you see, feel free to reach out to me in an email and let me know that you're interested in something. I'll give you a better deal than if you were to buy it on Poshmark, you know, yada, yada, yada. And without fail, with most thrift hauls that I upload onto YouTube, I get at least one or two emails, sometimes more, from people who wanna buy stuff that they saw in that thrift haul. You can kind of do the same thing on Instagram. You can show pictures in your stories or even in your feed of things that you just picked up that are for sale, and that gives people an opportunity to DM you and you know make the sale that way the same goes for Facebook if you're part of a Hannah Anderson buy sell trade store for example and you have a number of Hannah Anderson pieces then you can put those pieces in the group and let people know that they're for sale and you can make money that way so a lot of different ways that you can just outright show the items that you have in your Poshmark closet or eBay store or even stuff that you haven't even really processed yet and let people know that they can purchase from you directly so that's one way that you can increase your revenue as a reseller by using social media platforms. You can also use your different social media platforms to let people know about any sales you might be running. Perhaps you're running a buy one, get one free sale on Poshmark and you wanna make sure that your following knows about it. Instagram is a great way to post that kind of information. Same with Facebook, for example. If you have a Facebook group that you have cultivated this community of people who are kind of underneath you, learning from you, and you know, you're like their disciple or whatever, you know, you could let them know, hey, in my eBay store, or everything's half off right now, like come visit my eBay store right now. So it's a great way to even let people know that you're running sales. Another thing that is really great about social media is that you can utilize affiliate links. What are affiliate links? Let's talk about Amazon's affiliate program first because I think that they're probably like one of the easiest ones to use and Amazon is a company that probably the majority of us shop from. But basically what I do as an Amazon affiliate is one, I sign up for the program and two, I just start creating links for things 
things that I use for my reselling business. So for example, I made a video about the light box that I use. I'll link that video right here. And I give a demonstration on how I use it to take pictures of shoes and other kinds of accessories. And then in the video, I said, I have a link for this specific light box down in the description below if you wanna check it out for yourself. And that is an affiliate link through Amazon. And what happens is if you click on that link, even if you don't buy that particular photo box, if you buy something within the next 48 hours after clicking my link, I do get a small commission from it. I don't personally make a ton of money using Amazon affiliates, but it is a really great passive way to make some extra side money just from you know creating these links and putting them in your description. Other people on Instagram will utilize Amazon affiliate links as well, just within their stories. You know They'll talk about something that they're using and they'll say swipe up if you wanna try it out for yourself. They might create posts that center around an affiliate link. However people utilize them, creating and utilizing affiliate links is a great way to make some side income as well. And the more intentional you are about promoting them, the more money you're obviously going to make from those affiliate links. Now, other affiliate programs that I'm a part of that I have also made some side money from utilizing are affiliate programs from companies like List Perfectly. If you sign up for List Perfectly using my coupon code, which is Becky Park, you save 30% off of your first month, but I also get a nice little kickback because of the fact that you signed up using my code. And every month I'm able to make a small amount of income on the side of my reselling business. And it's just because of my influence on social media platforms such as Instagram and YouTube that I'm able to do that and I'm able to promote List Perfectly and my coupon code for them. And then the same thing with apps like Kitizen. Kitizen has a great affiliate program and what I'll do is every once in a while I'll talk about Kitizen and I'll say, hey, if you wanted to try out Kitizen, you can get $5 if you use my promo code and I'll also get, again, a little bit of a kickback. So there are so many different companies that have some sort of affiliate program and it's a nice way to make a little bit of side income. But again, people are only going to use your affiliate links if you give them a reason to, if they've already grown to like you, to trust you and to want to see you succeed even more. And that comes from you providing educational content for them. That comes from you creating meaningful meaningful relationships with them, like interacting with them, you know, via DM or, you know, responding to their comments on YouTube videos. It comes from building relationships and that's when people want to help you succeed. On platforms like Instagram and YouTube, as your following and influence grows, you might find yourself being asked to partake in some brand deals, or you might be in a place where you could reach out to brands that you believe in and that you stand behind and ask them if they'd be willing to partner with you in some shape or form and monetize off of that experience. It's a little bit different from affiliate marketing, but it's basically, you know, working with a brand or a company and saying, I will make an Instagram post about this product. And for doing that, you're going to pay me X amount of dollars, or I will go ahead and try this app and, you know, create a video about it for my YouTube channel. And for doing that for your company, you're going to pay me X amount of dollars. So, you know, brand deals are another way, especially as you grow your following that you can make some nice side income as a reseller. And then when it comes to like YouTube, for example, once you're able to be monetized, which means that you have at least 4,000 hours of watch time and at least 1,000 subscribers, then you're also able to make some nice little side income from AdSense. And AdSense is basically, even as you're watching this YouTube video right now, you'll notice that there are a couple of ads sprinkled in throughout the video. And if you sit through those ads and watch them, I make like a few pennies every time you do that. And so that's another way as you grow your influence, as you grow your subscriber base, as you grow all of those things, and more and more people are watching your videos on YouTube, again, you can make some side income that isn't from from you selling clothes, but it's from you sitting there talking about your reselling journey, talking about any tips and tricks that you may have, showing what you might be picking up at the thrift stores. And as people continue to come back to your YouTube channel week after week, you can grow some side income from doing that. I'm sure there are a ton of other ways you can utilize social media to make some money. If you you know, know of some other ways or you have utilized some other ways to make money using social media, definitely leave me a comment down below and let me know. Also, while we're on the topic of leaving comments. If you have a YouTube channel about reselling, or if you have an Instagram or a Facebook group that you oversee, definitely leave a comment so that we can all know. Maybe we can all follow some new people that we weren't aware of. Maybe we can subscribe to some new YouTube channels. So make sure you leave a comment about where we can find you, what kind of information you're sharing, and what kind of value you are providing to your followers. And then make sure that 
you read some of the other comments too and maybe you'll find a new friend on Instagram or a new person to watch on YouTube. I love building and growing community here. So if that's one small way I can do it, then please go for it. Also, if you're enjoying this video and if you feel like you're getting any value so far, make sure that you hit that like button. Okay, so now let's talk about some tips and tricks that I have when it comes to growing your social media following because the more followers you have, honestly, like the more influence you have as well and the more opportunity you have to make some money using your social media platforms. So my first tip, and I feel like this is a tip that I have on everything reselling related to is make sure that you're consistent. Just like Poshmark and eBay and all these different reselling platforms really value people who are listing consistently and sharing consistently, platforms like Instagram and YouTube are no different. They wanna know that you're consistent. And furthermore, your audience wants to know that you're consistent. You wanna give your audience a reason to continue coming back to your YouTube channel or to continue coming back to your Instagram. And if they know that like, you're one of those people that will post things like every once in a while or just when you feel like it, it it's harder for them to create a sort of rhythm or even schedule for themselves to check out what's going on with your YouTube channel. But if they know every Wednesday she's gonna drop a what's old video or she always puts out two videos a week or whatever, then that's one great way to help your audience trust you and know when to come back to your social media platform to get more of you. The second tip that I would say is before you ask for anything, before you try to sell anything, make sure that you're providing value. This is probably the biggest mistake that I see on Instagram, for example. I see a lot of people promoting their stuff. You know, they're saying, look at all the new stuff in my Poshmark closet, like visit my Poshmark closet to shop, or I'm running this sale, like visit my Poshmark closet to shop. You know, it's a lot of like self-promotion, but they haven't provided any value. And because they haven't provided any value, one, they don't have a very big following, and two, their following doesn't like or trust or care about them enough to support them in that way of making a monetary, not donation, but like supporting them in a monetary fashion with a purchase. So for me, one thing that I notice when it comes to Instagram is I will always gain the most followers and my posts will get shared the most and I will have the most engagement on posts when I post something that is helpful to other resellers. So probably like two years ago, I remember I posted something about how I use Google Snapseed to edit my pictures and that post blew up. It was shared so many times. I got so many followers because of it. It got a ton of likes and I notice that and then I continue to make more posts like that because I was in a season of trying to grow my following and I understood that the way to grow my following was to provide value to people. And that would be a reason why people would press that follow button is because they could see in my feed, this is someone who is not just trying to sell something to me, but she's providing value. And so you wanna make sure that you provide value before you start promoting stuff. So even for me now, I have a little over 60 15,000 followers on Instagram and I will promote YouTube videos every now and then I will promote a sale every now and then but for the most part I try to use my Instagram as a place where I'm sharing knowledge I'm sharing tips and tricks about reselling I'm sharing about what kind of stuff is selling for me I also use it as a way to kind of let people into my personal life a little bit more than maybe I do here on YouTube or definitely more than I can on like Poshmark or eBay you know I'm just giving people a glimpse into who I am as a person what I stand for, you know, how I like to spend my time outside of reselling. Some people find that fascinating. Some people don't care, but that's what I'm using my Instagram for these days. So the third tip I have for you when it comes to growing your social media platform and utilizing it in a way to make yourself some more income. This is another mistake that I see. A lot of people will use one social media platform to promote another one. So for example, a common mistake that I see is people will basically only use their Instagram to promote when a new YouTube video is coming out. You know, like they won't really say anything, <laughs> they won't really share any new information, but when they have a new YouTube video out, they'll put a picture of their thumbnail and they'll say, there's a new YouTube video out. The problem is you haven't really given anyone on Instagram a reason to care about your YouTube video or even your YouTube channel because you haven't given them an opportunity to care about you. I think it's okay to promote your YouTube channel or to promote your Facebook group or to share an affiliate link for something, but 
I think the only way you're going to see any sort of engagement with those kinds of posts are if people have bought into you as a person and as a brand already. And so something that you hear a lot of like social media gurus say is that it takes one platform to grow another. And while there is some truth to that, it only comes if you've given people a reason to care about you in the first place. The next tip I have is be yourself and be authentic. You know, I think we see a lot of people who are killing it on Instagram or YouTube and we think to ourselves, okay, so if I want to have as many subscribers as that person, then I need Need to act like them and I need to be like blank and I need to have the same kind of content as them. And I would say that's not true. No one is watching you or following you because you are a poor man's version of blank, but you want them to watch you and follow you because of you. You want them to know who you are. So be authentic, be yourself a hundred percent. And you have to understand too, that not everyone is going to like you. And we'll talk about that later, but that's okay. Just be yourself, be authentic, and people will appreciate that. And the people who decide to follow you because of who you are, those are your true fans. And you want to build up as many true fans as possible, not because of people who like you because of what you're allowing yourself to present to them or because you're trying to come across a certain way people can usually read right through that so just be yourself going along with that i think it helps to have a predictable style or even predictable content that people can kind of count on you to put out into the world so i'm going to give three examples of people who i think are doing such a good job of this the next person i'll talk about is voyage as a verb and i've talked about kristen and kevin before they've actually come on the channel before i'll link their video right here but they're so good at marketing themselves and one time i remember kristen talking about how she's very intentional about how she designs her Instagram feed. She always alternates her pictures. So one picture will be of something that they recently thrifted and you know, like her cover picture for what she shows on Poshmark with some information about that brand or maybe just a life lesson that she learned. Well, I don't know, just it always shows a picture of some article of clothing, always something beautiful. And then the next picture after that can be about whatever, you know, regarding their reselling business, but it's like a grid on her feed of clothing, something else piece of clothing, something else, piece of clothing. And you always know that you're gonna learn something when you visit their Instagram as well. The last person's Instagram that I'll talk about is Kathy from Ginger Marvin. And she is someone who in her stories every day, I can count on her to show a picture of herself holding all of her packages, as well as every single thing that she sold that day and how much she made from each item. I love the consistency of her posts and her stories on Instagram because I know that I'm gonna learn something every time I watch her stories, I'm gonna learn what kind of Stuff is selling for her. I'm going to learn how much profit she made off of those things. And I get excited every time I see that she's posted in her stories for the day. So those are three examples, whether it's like a style thing, whether it's um, what kind of content you're putting out there, or whether it's just consistently putting the same sort of thing every single day on your Instagram. That's an example of how you can create some sort of style that people start to associate you with. And there's something really powerful about that when you think about it in marketing terms. The next two tips I'm not going to go into too deeply because actually next week I'm going to have a video specifically about these things when it comes to Instagram. And if you want to see that video, then make sure that you subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and hit that bell notification so you know when the video comes out. But my next tip is to make sure that you batch your content. And what I mean by that is it can be really overwhelming to create all of this social media content. It can take up a lot of time and a lot of energy. And so one thing that I have started to do when it comes to YouTube videos or even with Instagram is to create a lot of content at once. So rather than sitting down to just film one video, the goal is to film two or three in one sitting. And that way I've got a bunch of these videos on deck, ready to be edited. And even when it comes to editing, trying to create time and space to edit two or three videos in one setting, you can do the same thing with Instagram. And that's what next week's video is going to be about. It's going to be about how to batch your content, how to schedule it out so that maybe you just spend one hour per week creating all of your content and you set a schedule for all of them to be uploaded to your Instagram feed and then you don't worry about it. You just worry about it for that one hour and then you're done for the week. Similarly to that, I would definitely recommend setting a time limit for yourself 
both for how much you are consuming when it comes to social media, and then also with how much time you're putting into creating content. So on Instagram, you don't wanna be one of those people who is wasting hours and hours just aimlessly scrolling through your feed, but you wanna make sure that you're intentional about the time that you are investing as a consumer on Instagram as well as on YouTube. But the same goes for, again, creating content. If you find that you're wasting all this time creating content because you're not doing it in an efficient manner, that's time that you're wasting where you could be listing or you could be photographing or you could be doing all these other things. So you wanna make sure that you're using your time well and I think it helps to set some sort of time limit. My final tip, and I think that this is the most important one, is you have to understand going into creating some sort of social media presence that not everyone is gonna like you and that's okay. I have been a choir teacher now for, I think it's been like 10, 11 years, I don't even know. And one thing I've learned is that although I feel like I'm a pretty good teacher and you know I feel like a lot of my students will always tell me like, oh, you're my favorite teacher or whatever, I'm not gonna be everyone's cup of tea. It's just not possible. I will encounter students every year that for whatever reason, they just don't like me. It might be my teaching style. It might be, I don't know. I don't know what it is, but there are going to be students every single year who just don't like me. And I've grown to understand that that's okay because there are a buttload of people on earth for a reason. We're not here to be friends with everyone and people naturally kind of gel with some people and not so much with others. So even with like other resellers on YouTube, there are some that I will watch every single video that they put out because something about their style, something about who they are, it just, I get it and I just want more of them. And so I'm like a diehard fan. And then there are some other resellers that other people love. They have much higher subscriber counts than I do. And they're just not my cup of tea. It's not because I think that they're like a horrible person or anything like that. I just, I just don't vibe with their style or with their content for whatever reason. And that's okay. Sometimes it goes beyond that. Sometimes you get straight up trolls who will leave you hateful comments on your YouTube videos or on your Instagram posts. And you know, especially even for myself, I feel like in the wake of everything that's happening in our nation, whether it's with the pandemic, whether it's with the Black Lives Matter movement, I feel like I've become a lot more vocal both on YouTube and on Instagram about where I stand on all of those things. And on Instagram, I noticed I had close to 200 people unfollow me because I have been putting out a lot of content about Black Lives Matter and about the things that I'm learning as I try to educate myself about systemic racism in our country. And that's okay. Like it's okay that not everyone wants to follow me based on the different things that I'm saying I believe in, based on the different kinds of content I'm trying to put out in the world. Not everyone is going to like me. And the sooner you can be at peace with that fact, the better you'll be for it. So again, can social media help you earn more money as a reseller? Absolutely. You do have to be really intentional about it, but social media can be a great way for people to just fall in love with you as a brand and wanna support you monetarily. And not only that, but there are other kind of side avenues of income that you can make as a reseller if you utilize social media in a smart way. I would love to hear how you are utilizing social media to make money or what plans you have as far as how you're gonna use your social media presence to earn yourself some additional income. If you enjoyed this video. If you learned anything, make sure you hit that like button and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.